Fred, I haven't talked to you for a while, so thanks for doing this. I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> um, just wondering if you can speak on, you know, Thor and Kobe with this being senior weekend for them and, and what they've kind of meant to you this year and, and Thor for the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll start with Thor. He, he was the one guy that we inherited in, in, in the program uh, coming back. And, you know, I think when you look at everything that he accomplished last year, he was just such a stabilizing force and, in, uh, you know, a very difficult time when you take over a program uh, like we did and to have to, you know, show the leadership and the guy that one guy that had played in the Big Ten Conference, uh, you know, albeit not a lot until the end of his sophomore season uh, when he got in there after some injuries and, and things like that happened and I thought he took advantage of it. You know, he really has understood and done everything that we've asked of him. And, you know, he's, he's just a rock out there. He's, he, he stabilizes everything when he comes in the game on both ends of the floor. Uh, it's been great to see him shooting the ball better as of late, uh, you know, finishing this season on a high note. And, you know, I know, as we all do, that this season doesn't count against the clock. And, you know, we've had discussions with our seniors, you know, as far as what their options are moving forward. Nothing will be determined, you know, until we're done playing uh, these last four regular season games and then are in the Big Ten tournament. And then, you know, we'll sit down and, and really go into depth about what the options are and, uh, you know, what, what will happen with that. But, you know, Thor's been an absolute rock and, you know, he's, he's great leadership, especially by example, you know, always doing the right thing and just can't say enough good things about Thor. Uh, you know, Kobe coming in as a grad transfer, you know, had three seasons where he started at, at uh, Western Illinois. And, you know, another guy, when you bring in those older players that have been through a lot of the battles, uh, you know, that some of the guys have not experienced, you know, you ask a lot of them. And Kobe's been another guy that, that's been phenomenal as far as holding guys accountable and getting on guys. Uh, his work ethic is as good as anybody on our team. Uh, you know, I think he's got a bright future ahead, both those guys in this game. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how things go once the season's over. But, you know, I'm, I'm proud of Kobe for everything that he's endured, playing a different role than he ever has as far as coming off the bench. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, give those guys something to remember on their senior night. And then Derek, who we will honor tomorrow as well. He's the first person to graduate um, in his family. And, and, you know, that's, that's big time for everything that Derek has gone through in the last couple of years. And, you know, he's just uh, he's stayed strong through everything that he has had to go through uh, from the sit out years of transfer and, you know, to, to have to serve the suspension, which we thought would be reduced this year, just based on the crazy circumstances that we're playing in. Uh, but, you know, I'm so proud of that kid for, you know, hanging in there and sticking through it all and being the first person to graduate in his family and being a role model for his little brother. and you know, everything that he's all about. So, you know, it's it's three great kids that we're honoring tomorrow uh, as far as players. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of all three of them. Robin Lashett. Well, I guess, uh, you know, I, I personally was surprised with the Derek Walker news. When did that decision uh, become finalized? And I guess what was the, the thinking behind not coming back for his, his yeah. senior year? He, he, we anticipate Derek, you know, coming back and, and being a part of this for sure next year. But, you know, again, graduating this year, his mom being able to be in attendance, uh, you know, it's really important for Derek and his family uh, to go through this. And, you know, again, when, when you're the first person in the family uh, to graduate, it, it's such an important moment. And, uh, you know, he wants to celebrate it. And his, his mom wants to be here for him to celebrate it as well and his little brother. So. You know, that, that's where the decision came on that. And, you know, we'll, uh, you know, uh, again, we anticipate Derek uh, being back uh, next year, but, you know, we really wanted to celebrate the great accomplishment that, uh, that Derek has achieved this year. Sam McEwen. Um, so w when you think about uh, what, maybe what some of the older players in the program, specifically Webster and Walker kind of signed up for, and we can ask them this, I guess, too. What, what have, um, what do you feel like the lessons these guys have gotten from this experience will be? Um, I guess in short, the things that you can learn, even if you don't win a lot of games. Well, again, you, you look at Kobe playing at a level where he hadn't played before and he wanted to play at the highest level. And he, and he put himself in that position with three uh, productive years 
at Western Illinois. And, you know, moving up again, he's never complained about the role that he's had after starting and playing with the ball in his hands for most of the first three years in college. And, you know, to play the role uh, of off the ball, off the bench, uh, you know, has been something that's been an adjustment for him. But, you know, moving forward in his pro career, you know, everything doesn't always go perfect. It's not all smooth. It's not all roses. So he's going to, you know, move on and I think benefit from uh, the role that he has been asked to play this year and how he accepted that. And, you know, again, you need guys like that, obviously, on your roster if you're going to have any chance of success. So, you know, we ha obviously the record, you know, it's not what any of us wanted uh, to this point. Uh, you know, you can use it as motivation, as fuel down the road, whatever um, path your life takes. And Kobe's going to be successful. He, I think he'll play basketball for a long time. Um, but, you know, when basketball's over, when he hangs up his shoes, that kid's going to be really successful for the type of person that he is and for what he's all about, you know, his character. He's got great parents. And, you know, he's just a, a rock of, uh, of a person. Uh, you know, Derek, same thing when you go from you know playing quite a bit to not playing a lot of sophomore year at Tennessee uh, moving on to have to face the adversity that he's had uh, for the last two years through it all you know stay as positive as he can it's been very emotional it's been an emotional roller coaster for that kid and you know to graduate and to do something that's never been done in his family is um, you know something that you know he can create a legacy in that family so you know I just Again, love what those kids are all about, and you know we'll, we'll certainly try to help them, uh, whatever direction life takes them. Any questions for Coach Michael Jacob? Anyone? Robin, go ahead. I figured we should ask you about Minnesota. Um, you know, obviously, they're going through their their share of struggles. Uh, what challenges? Do they present, and how do you prepare for a team that's been working without several key members of their starting lineup with injuries that um, I guess it's questionable if they'll be able to play um, tomorrow night? Yeah, it, you know, it, it starts with Marcus Carr. He's one of the most dynamic players, not only in our league, but in the country. And they've had some incredible wins this year when, when you look at some of the teams that they've knocked off uh, in their home building. And, you know, the start they got off to last night, it was 16-4 to four, uh, early in that game against Northwestern. And, uh, you know, just, you know, got to a point, it got a little fatigued, I think, late in that game. And, and, uh, and Northwestern is, you know, again, it just shows the depth of our league, how good they are, uh, you know, as a 13th, uh, you know, record in our league right now. It just, you know, Penn State's 12th. It's just amazing to me, you know, how talented they are. But that's just the depth and what our league is all about right now. It's the best league um, by far and the best that the league has ever been. It's not even close top to bottom and you know it's just again every night you got to be perfect if you're going to win and you know they're a team again that's had some some great wins um, you know they're coming in on a one day prep uh, like we are and you know I think the team that goes out and competes and plays the hardest is, is going is to win the game so you know it's going to be important to get off hopefully to a good start uh, gain a little confidence last night I thought was you know our most disappointing game since the Ohio State game I just didn't think you know, early, our mentality, uh, what you have to do, uh, you know, was to go out and win a Big Ten game on the road, especially against a top five team. And, you know, turnovers on the road, especially like that, early mindless ones are death. And, you know, it's just we had way too many of them early, and that kind of set the tone. All that being said, it's still a 10-point game, you know, with about 12 minutes to go. And then they just, you know, really hurt us on the things that we had keyed uh, before the game and what we had talked about as far as the transition, as far as, uh, the rebounding, you know, they just uh, crushed us on the boards late after doing a really good job in the first half. And it just looked to me like for the first time, we just looked fried out there. And, you know, we got to find a way to dig into the reserves, find some energy and sustain it uh, for 40 minutes. And, you know, it's going to be important tomorrow and, and then with the remaining three games after that. Michael Bruns? Fred, you are kind of getting down to the end of this stretch of games. Um, I mean, what have you kind of learned, I guess, over the last couple of weeks about your team that, you know, maybe you wouldn't have been able to, I guess, if you hadn't had to go through something like this and, and just the kind of the challenge that you had with scheduling and everything else? I know my, through adversity, I think our guys have continued to battle through the most, I, I, you know, I don't know if we've, any team in the country has had more adversity than we've had over the course of the season. And I'll say this about our guys to go out there and continue to compete through it all. 
Uh, that's one thing I've absolutely learned about them is that they're competitors, that they're going to continue to go out there and fight and battle whatever schedule they've thrown at us. And it's been, it's been a grind. I poured a cup of coffee on the counter this morning. I didn't put my cup in there. I mean, I, you know, we're all mentally exhausted right now. But, you know, we just got to find a way to continue, uh, you know, to, to, like I said, dip into the reserves and, and find energy to go out there in those 40 minutes. Uh, we shot free throws this morning. I, I just thought our guys needed a mental break. It could have gone in there and pounded them about the defensive transition and about, you know, the blow bys, uh, you know, jumping on our contest, just, you know, lack of blocking out late in that game, but I just don't think that would have accomplished anything, you know, to pound them into the ground right now, just based on everything going on. Just wanted to go out there, you know, try to keep them, you know, fresh, get some skill work in, and then come back tomorrow morning and try to fix some of the issues that we've got going on with our team right now. You look at what we did after the shutdown defensively, four straight opponents, we held under 40% field goal uh, percentage, and right now it's just too easy. We're not doing those same things uh, that we were when we came back from the shutdown. Some of it's lack of practice time, some of it's fatigue physically, mentally, uh, but we got to find a way to dig in. Teams aren't going to feel sorry for you. They're going to keep coming at you and try to pounce on you. So, you know, it's important we, you know, find a way to go out and compete for 40 minutes. But that's the thing that I've learned. You know, last night was the first time I really sensed uh, we just didn't have it uh, since the Ohio State game. And we got to find a way to get it back. Have you ever had a situation where you've really had to I guess kind of diagnose and, and have a really good kind of temperature of where your team's at night to night to know when to kind of press more and, and maybe when to back off a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of that from experience and, you know, having the opportunity to play this game at, at all levels, uh, you know, helps prepare you for that. And you just try to take the temperature of your team and you talk to your older guys, uh, how they're feeling. You know, we had three guys that probably wouldn't have been able, even if we had we practiced today, would not have been able to practice three of our guys in the rotation and you know hopefully they'll be ready to go tomorrow uh, but you know I just don't think going in there and pounding them into the ground would have done anything you know you just you, you look at them after the game and you just see kind of the blank stare uh, you know going through the team and again the first time I saw that was last night so you know bring them in try to freshen them up put a smile on their face uh, through this tough stretch and go out and get them to, to compete tomorrow, I thought was the most important thing. We'll go a little harder in the morning since we didn't do uh, anything live on the court today, and then hopefully get them you know, prepared for a bat, another Big Ten battle. In the last few games, it seems like the bench has kind of stepped up and you've gotten sparks from different guys at different times. Um, obviously, Thor and Kobe have been two of those guys. Um, how, how important has that been, and will that be to this kind of finishing stretch here getting – uh, consistent bench production. Yeah, it, it's it's important, Jacob. You know, the starters, uh, they've played obviously a lot of minutes. Uh, it has been great to see Kobe and Thor, the way they shot the ball, uh, you know, down the stretch here to, uh, you know, to help them hopefully have a good feeling, you know, heading, heading uh, into the last part of their senior season. But yeah, you, you need production. You know, Eduardo has shown flashes of being a kid that's got a really bright future. And, you know, his first game was Minnesota when I put him out there. And I think he was a plus nine uh, in those minutes, made some really good passes, his feel. You know, he rose up and shot that 18-footer last night like, you know, he'd been shooting them all year. <laughs> you know, he's a confident kid. We had a free throw contest out there. He made the game-winning free throw on both ends for his team. So he's a confident kid uh, that's going to only continue to get better and better. So it's been good to get uh, minutes uh, for Eduardo and, and continue to see his development. You know, that's important. It's important stretch finishing this season and, and, and certainly going into next season. Uh, but, you know, we'd like to end it on a high note. If we can find a way to go out and, uh, and get a couple wins, you know, that, that, that I think would do wonders for this team.